Hey guys, what is up? Roshi is here. Today I'm showing you my turbo fog list. Now I, I've i been shredding the ladder with this. I grinded all the way up to master. Highly recommend this. Uh, sometimes my brews are good enough to like break even or go slightly positive. But this with this one, I've gone, I went 13 and 2 on stream. And I've won quite a few games off stream once I hit master. So I've pretty confident in this list it's pretty tuned you can change a few things if you want but if if you took this and ran it as is at least for the past few days i've had a lot of really good luck against the meta anyway let's jump into it uh, one of the main things we have going on here this is a turbo fog deck so that is a magic the gathering term but the way that deck used to work is you would play spells that prevent your opponent's units from damaging you. So to that effect, we have Copper Hall Blessing. Um, this makes your units invulnerable and you as well. And Audacious Rune. Um, Audacious Rune being cheaper, uh, this is definitely the easier one to cast. But uh, Copper Hall Blessing is just better um, later on because this can even prevent burn spells from hitting you. This prevents weapons and more. So Audacious Ruse can also kind of troll you if you don't have enough justice or your opponents are just completely ridiculous with uh, their creature's power. But uh, Copper Hall Blessing is basically always a fog. So these are the two main fogs. Uh, other than that, we have Equalize and Shenra Speaks. As are other ways to like prevent damage. Um, equalize being three power and getting around Aegis is pretty nice. Pretty often we can set this up to uh, clear away some of their board and maybe even make them discard cards depending on your hand. We do have a lot of card draw but uh, if you play you get lucky and you get some ramp or you you know get a pretty decent start Sometimes this can uh, wipe your opponent's board and pick a few cards out of their hand. Uh, other times, it, it's kind of hit or miss. Typically, when it's bad, you don't need to cast it anyway. And when it's good, it is really good. I've had times where this is a three power wipe my opponent's board and make them discard a few cards. And <laughs> it's really hard to uh, ignore the value that can happen here. With how many Justice Sigils we have, it's also pretty easy to cast. Um, there's not a lot of hands where we can't cast it on like turn 4. So uh, this card's pretty good. Um, those are the main... Um, well, I suppose we do have Shenrao Speaks as well. So this is the other way. Uh, being able to silence is huge right now. There's quite a few decks that want to reanimate stuff. And you can use this to sort of break the chain, so to speak. And uh, if your opponent's cards all have Aegis and you need to get a clean board wipe, you can actually uh, use Audacious Ruse. This will pop everything's Aegis and then you can follow it up next turn with a Shenra Speaks. So that comes up pretty frequently as uh, the Combray deck was pretty popular while we were playing. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, the rest of the cards, we've got a lot of filler and a lot of like ramp and like land draw, just ways to cycle through the deck and hit our cards. Uh, we'll just start at the top here. We have Copper Hall, Porter. Not too much going on here. It's a 2 1, grabs a Justice Sigil from our deck. Uh, the reason I like this guy is no one ever wants to block him usually. And if they do block him or kill him, you get a land out of it. And, uh,. We just kind of, we want a few units to trigger Onslaught, and I'll get into that a little more later. Um, Temple Scribe just gains life, draws a card, it's cheap, same reason as before, we can use it to trigger Onslaught, and uh, yeah, this just gives our deck some velocity. It's basically like a free roll to get to the other cards that are more important, and it can also chump block, so very, this card serves its purpose quite well. Uh, Peril Abbey Smuggler. We opted out of this uh, just because of the nature of our deck not having too many minions and the ones we do have we kind of want to just throw them away immediately or block or whatever. Uh, the new land grab cards just weren't good for us and we actually do have quite a bit of spells so 
With the way the uh, fog effects we have work, we can actually use them to keep our minions alive. And you could make Pearl Abbey Smuggler into a pretty good threat, or at least pump it enough to trade with something. So this ends up getting good value, and it it just basically lets us have a more versatile market, which is pretty important here. Um, we can dive into the market real quick. We've got Edict of Kodosh. Uh, this just coming down and being a good, cheap, efficient removal spell and just permanently dealing with things that are problematic is great. Uh, there's a lot of Stone Scar cruising around and like big shadow decks like Fine or Mono Shadow. And this just helps us cleanly deal with some of their threats like Ikaria or other things. Uh, Lumen Reclaimer, this is kind of... This is there for mill, this is there in case we draw too many cards, or if they're using their void, we can shuffle it back in. Uh, it has enough purposes that it's a pretty good pretty good tool to have in our market. It, it's usually, uh, the times when it's good, you really want it. Uh, harsh roll, uh, this is not a lot to talk about here. It's harsh roll, just blow up the board. Sometimes you really just really need a turn five harsh roll so this will help you get that passage of eons we could use some of the ones that only target one but we kind of want all of our market cards to be super impactful we do a lot of ramping and have a lot of card draw so just having one that one for ones wasn't kind of cutting it for me plus there's a lot of decks that try and spaghetti mode off on relics and this just like the Gars, for example, and this just cleanly blows away the board, and then um, our Fogs can handle the rest. Uh, Pit of Lenecta, this is just a great win con. Um, spamming out worms is awesome, gaining life is awesome. These are both things we want to be doing, and we can keep doing them until they kill it. So, pretty solid card. This also combos, I wouldn't really call it a, hop, a combo. Maybe it's more of a derp bow, <laughs> but uh, another card I haven't talked about yet, Grodov's Burden. So if they are killing the worms, you're just passing around the 7-7 seven, seven stats, and you can shuffle it around to your other minions. Like, it's kind of silly. Pit of Lenecta is already crazy, but with these two cards combined, it it gets out of hand very fast. Uh, Barter's Chains is our other big, thick threat that... Uh, Doubles our minions, kills stuff, like this, it's, they're both things that we want to be doing. Uh, we didn't have a lot of room in the market, so it was kind of pick one to have a few of in the main deck, and Martyr's Chains was the one. Uh, it, it's good in multiples, and it just, it'll close out a game real fast if not dealt with, and if you've got minions or lands to play. Uh, Moondial and Grodov's Burden. These are just our repeated card draw effects. I had a few games I played where even though we stabilized the board, we just weren't drawing enough cards. And now we can stabilize the board and just keep drawing cards every turn of the game and lock down, basically lock out the game from there. Uh, Moondial giving Nightfall kind of helps you out early on too. Whereas Grodov's Burden... Um, has that relic hate and unit hate tacked on and exalted. So they both serve their purpose, whereas Moondial's a little better earlier. Grodov's Burden is just more versatile and can be used multiple times a turn. Um, so these guys both serve their purpose as just kind of a repeated card draw. Uh, Sididi is our other source of card draw. And amusingly, uh, we can use Sididi... Uh, his curse to double up our like our fog effects become so much better uh, one thing to keep in mind though is it's if no damage was dealt so if you want to draw the card even though we have our fog sometimes you have to decide if you'd rather be killing their minions or drawing the card and i found typically usually drawing the card is the more correct answer so if you're going to be playing Fogs with the intent of drawing your card, and make sure you don't block, because if you block, you'll still deal damage, and then you won't trigger the curse. So keep that in mind. 
Um, last card, I kind of skipped over, but I'm coming back to her now, Diana. Uh, four power, gain four life, basically, and has been a decent ultimate and cycling through your deck. This is all of the things we want to be doing. This card helps us bridge the gap into when we can uh, start fogging every turn, or this lets you block, it blocks flyers. Late game, you can pay, t pay 12 and it will become, like plus 12 or plus 20 in extreme circumstances this card just it really helps fill in the gap and get you from the early game to the late game uh, one other card i didn't discuss enter the monastery this is one of the new cards from the set and this card it's basically cultivate for magic gathering but uh this card's low-key the vip of this deck being able to ramp, and it puts the Justice Sigil into play untapped, by the way. So you can play this, grab the land, make your land drop for the turn, and all of a sudden be able to cast a 2-drop, or cast a Fog, or cast something bigger if it's later on. Um, and just ripping those Justice Sigils out of your deck, uh, you're gonna hit, with, with these two cards combined, it's not going to take very long before you quickly have drawn all of the Justice Sigils from your deck, and uh, then you'll hit more impactful draws on the late game. Uh, the last card, Nahid's Distillation, just it's usually a 5 power draw 3, or even as a 7 power draw 3, it's fine. It's just straight gas, refill your hand. Um, if you're at 7 power, you can exhaust something and still have a douche. A audacious ruse uh but yeah this is the deck uh i've been crushing with it i like i said i flew all the way up to masters check it out here's some games uh enjoy all right here we go this hand is bad this hand is good I wonder why they didn't make this guy a Minotaur. <laughs> Sorry about that. Still kind of waiting to see what he's up to. I die to serve. I don't think we care if he keeps his whip. We'd rather just have the power. I have the power! But yeah, like... Yeah. I think we just keep hanging out. I bring a boon.
His deck's super fun. That's a shame. We had some fire on top of our deck. What would you like? Retribution. Retribution. We need to hit our land drops before we slam pit. My gifts live on. I die to serve. Yeah, I'm going to let him draw two here. Land is actually just fine. The fruits of paradise. Hopefully we get to keep our pits for at least one more turn. Oh, good game. This hand actually gives us the best chance.
Not sure what he's up to. Maybe it's the mirror match. Yeah, we uh, played him because we want to hit our ninth power drop. We can slam chains. My verdict is my gifts live on. I bring a boon. Retribution. Oh, now we have to make choices. It's written right here. Oh yeah. It's written right here.
got me good. Alright, sure. Fun's gonna discard a lot of cards. <laughs> Can we equalize again? It's written right here. There's like a billion three drops that ambush. And we need to keep our uh, one drop alive to exhaust it. I gotta say though, our deck is a lot better prepared for what he's doing, because we played him earlier. Yeah, I'm not really ready to board wipe yet. The shadow has always been. Oh, I shouldn't block there because I lose my card draw. Now that I think about it, I don't get any card draw if this guy's in play. The nightmare 
ages. I should probably just hard roll. Retribution. This is silly. <laughs> I didn't realize there was still creeps on top. Good grief. Oh, that just tripled our health. One from many. My 
Oh. <laughs> Be a pretty big donk. Well, we've drawn all the sigils from our deck. Didn't we get our, uh... Is this the game our market got? Did... It is not. What would you like? Justice will be swift. Got uh, some redemption there. We'll keep this. This is a borderline hand, but our portal porter dies, or we uh, hit a land drop or two, we're in business. Yeah, that's all we need. Basically, guarantees a curve out. Nice. I get to play Diana. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, we still get Diana. Glad that wasn't a uh, onslaughted one. Retribution. It's written right here. I don't think we need another dial. Maybe I should have Genrao Speaks last turn. I thought about doing it. market unfortunately we don't have a way to clear his aegis
This guy is drawing cards for days. I wonder if we play Chains first, or Lenecta first. I suppose either way, we play... We'll do it this way. The pit's more important to us. I'd rather play it second. Plus, if we make two 14-14 worms at the end of our turn, he might just... What's the term? Shoot your shot? Got our shot. All right, um, we'll keep this one. It's not great, but at least we're on the play. We have power. Looks like we're playing against a throne room deck. I'll let myself take a little damage here. Sky 
We'll just warp him out. Step aside, tyrant. Aside, tyrant, die with honor. <laughs> Bootlicker rebellion lives on. I bring a boon. Please swap out of here. I wonder if we want distillation back. I think we do. We'll hold up our fog. I'll crush you. Live on. Gotta win there.
Our win rate's pretty crazy. Having like a lot of fun playing it too, but wonder if it isn't time to try something else. Alright guys, I'll probably be launching the video of uh, Turbo Fog sometime soon. Our win rate was absolutely insane with it. Um, it would be a fun to release that deck for everyone. I'm sending you over to Sunny Vale. We played him earlier. Uh, check him out, he's pretty good. Anyway, have a good night, guys. Oh hey, what's up, Roshi? Thanks for the raid. Welcome in, folks. We're trying to play balance here. I guess they don't have the uh, they don't have the influence to just play Roland, right? <laughs> Comrade equalize player. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's me. Alright, here's Ancestral Oasis being nice. <sighs> My opponent's doing something really ambitious with this influence base. Wow, 13 2 with Turbo Fog? That's insane. I mean, yeah, Equalize is definitely a house. There's no question.